Hey, women of WIRE, Debbie Holloway, happy Wednesday. I don't know about you guys, but I really missed not being able to talk to you all last week. It was such a bummer that Facebook was down and I couldn't do any videos. So sorry about that, glad you're here today. Have some really great things to share with you. And I'd like your input. First of all, the summit is coming up the 13th through the 16th of August in Anaheim. Uh, four days of Tom Ferry. Uh, we've got some fabulous breakout sessions. I would remind you if you're coming and you're in wire, bring your wire bag. I'm going to carry mine. Uh, how about your wire water bottle? I want to see wire represented. Now, I know that what we're going to try to do is get together somehow. So let me know if you're coming. And by the way, you don't have to be in Tom Ferry Coaching to attend the summit and to join us if we get together for WIRE. We're gonna try to work on that. It might have to be a pop-up something someplace, but we'll figure it out. At the summit, this is where I'd like your input. Um, we've got a variety of breakout sessions. I'm doing a panel on open houses and the wonderful Eileen Rivera is gonna be on that panel. I'm gonna give you some great ideas of things, different things you could do. Hey, Karen, hey, Joy. Congratulations, Joy, on your top 1,000. That's really cool. That is really, really cool. Congratulations. Um, so at the summit, I've got four things. One is an open house panel with Eileen Rivera. The other three are should I have a team or should I not have a team? We're gonna talk about that. And I'd love to know your thoughts on which is better for you and why. Which is better for you, having a team or not having a team and why. The second topic I'm gonna to talk about is building a business for maximum profits. And a lot of this is just some basic stuff we should all know, but then a few other things thrown in that I, can think, I think can help people keep more money. Hi Rhonda, hi Jackie. Um, I think it's important for us to look at how we can keep more money versus paying more money out. I think as a, in general, in real estate, I found over the years that most people don't have near the money they should have in selling real estate and being a realtor. So I'm gonna talk about building your business to maximize your profits. And then the other one I'm gonna talk about are personality styles, how to figure out what somebody is upon meeting them and just asking a couple of questions. Um, what different personality styles do and say that lets you know they're ready to buy? How to build rapport quickly with people because if we can build rapport quickly, we're much more likely to get them to not be stressed out and to make a purchase. Uh, so I think it's really important that we do that. So those are my three topics, personality styles, building your business for maximum profits, and should I have a team or no? I'd love what you do that you feel is really helping you keep more of your money. Hello, Miss Isabel. Um, oh, thank you, Eileen. I'm glad you like the topics. I think we have a ton of great stuff and I think these are really good and I just wanna hear from my wire women. Here are my three questions you can answer for me. Number one, what are you doing to maximize your return on your investment? How are you keeping more of your money? What's a simple tool or technique that you use? Secondly, what I wanna hear from you guys is, if you have a team, why it works for you. If you don't, why it doesn't work for you. So I think it's really important to know that. So what I wanted to share with you today was how do we speak to people? And I think about this, uh, I was watching something on TV and this man got upset and he got in a fight with another man. Um, he didn't like the way the, way the man was speaking, to, speaking um, he said it frightened him. And I thought, you know, how is it that we speak to people and make sure that they are comfortable with us? Do you ever think about how we talk to people? Have you ever recorded your voice and then played it back? I know my husband will say, oh, you were so strong on that. I'm like, really? I didn't think I was. But if I listen, sometimes I come across too intense, too strong. And I think, how do we speak to people, clients and customers, that either A, cause us to have great rapport and they want to work with us, or B, we wonder why we're losing clients. It could be something as simple as how we speak to people. So there are three basic things I wanna share with you today as far as how you speak to people. Number one, when you speak to somebody, you wanna make sure that when they speak, you shut up. 
It's the hardest thing for me in the world to do. Shut up and let them finish their thought. Repeat a little bit of what they said. Oh, okay, so I see what you're saying about um, what you think of the great room of this house we're looking at. I can see that. Doesn't mean you agree with them. It means you've acknowledged their right to have the opinion. So listen more than we talk, number one. Two, um, acknowledge what they've said. Give them a right to have an opinion. It doesn't have to be correct. And you're not telling them they're right, unless they are right. But you're giving them the right to have an opinion. So that's number two. And then number three, once you've, you've repeated and acknowledged what they've said. So you've listened. You repeated what they've said to them and you've acknowledged that. That's interesting, good for you, terrific. Ouch, so you're going through a divorce, ouch. You know, so, so that they know that number one, you heard them and number two, they had a right to that opinion. And then the next thing that I recommend that you do is that you have eye contact with them. I learned this in a talk that I did several years ago at the summit. I did a talk on charm. And when somebody is looking shoulders squared straight at you, they're paying attention. Subconsciously, you feel that they're paying attention. If they're like this and their leg or their arm is open and they're looking like at you like this, that what they're saying subconsciously is that I'm open for somebody else to step into a conversation. So likewise, when you're at an event and you see two people squared off face to face talking, you don't interrupt, they're in an intense conversation. If one of them is open, it's like they are subconsciously inviting someone else to come in. So think about this when you're speaking with people. And I'm not talking about over the phone, I'm talking about face to face. Over the phone is a whole different ball game. But when we're face to face to somebody, um, how we speak is important. How we acknowledge what they've had to say and affirm them is important. I'll tell you something else though that I think is really important is the type of language we use. Now, I probably use the word like as not as much as many, but I know, you know, like, I use like. And I think sometimes when we get too caught up in whatever a slang word is at the moment, like, okay, so like, don't you just hate it when I use that? Uh, I'm watching The Bachelorette one night. I was on the elliptical I thought, oh, I'll turn on something. So I was watching The Bachelorette. And this girl is a beautiful woman, pageant winner, I think. Anyway, beautiful woman. Every other word is like. And when you see that and you step, and you step back from it, you realize how bad that really sounds. Now, good for her if she wants to do it. For us, though, I believe we should interact based on the age range of the person we're dealing with. If they say like every other word, then okay, say like every other word. But you wouldn't want to do that with everyone. And I know a lot of people that are new in real estate, especially younger people, want to know how to build rapport quickly. Totally get into the model of the world of your client. If you get into the model of the world of your client, you are more likely to build rapport and have them sign with you. And that's the ultimate goal. We want to alleviate their stress and have them sign a contract, whether it is a contract to purchase or a contract to list their property. So you wanna think about this. When I speak to people, am I in their model of the world or am I being me? Because let's face it guys, when we're just being us, sometimes people don't like that. And if you're good in sales, that means you're really good at being what I call a chameleon. You're able to change your colors and get into the model of the world of the person you're talking to. So those were just my thoughts and my three tips for really how we speak to people and how that comes across. So I wanna close out by saying, don't forget, I wanna know what is something you're doing to keep more of your money? What are you doing to maximize your profits? Uh, if you are on a team, why does that work for you? If you're not, why does that work for you? I want to tie this into my talks that I'm going to be doing at the summit. I'm encouraging all of you to please come to at least one of my breakout sessions. I'd love to see you. Bring your wire water bottle, carry your wire bag if you have it. And remember to watch this page because if we can all hook up while we're there, I will be posting it on this page. And if you haven't gotten your tickets to the summit, sign up. It's a phenomenal event. 
August 13th through the 16th in Anaheim. Many people are bringing their family and the rest of the family is going to Disneyland. It's right across the street. So those are my thoughts for today. I missed you guys last week because of the Facebook glitch and I will be talking to you next week as well. Make it a powerful week.